From the Samsung Production Studios in the heart of Hazleton, Pennsylvania, it's your News 13. Brought to you by SFP TV and the Standard Speaker. In a move that shocked many, Freeland Police Chief Nadine Sist handed in her resignation effective immediately. But what sparked the decision to turn in that badge? Good evening and thanks so much for joining us everyone. I'm Kristen Bazinski. Nadine Sist took the job of police chief in the borough of Freeland back in July of 2010, making her the first ever female police chief of the borough's police department. But in a surprise move, Sist handed in her resignation Wednesday night effective immediately. News 13 talked with Borough Council President Bob Quinn Jr. early this morning, who couldn't say much because he had not had the opportunity to read Sis's letter, but would say that Council will address the resignation on June 4th. That's the next meeting. Council will also have to vote on to accept that resignation. In the meantime, Quinn says Officer Gerald Palermo will be in charge of the department. Since Sist was hired as chief, she has been an active top cop and told News 13 after her swearing in that she was very much a supporter of community policing and wanted to make sure the people of Freeland knew their police department. While not much is known about the contents of Sis's resignation letter, we have heard reports that she stated she will be pursuing other interests. Sis is also a law enforcement teacher at the Hazleton Area Career Center and has served in other communities as a police officer, such as Beaver Meadows. It was a fiery accident that claimed the life of a Whitehaven teen back in October. And now the victim's friend and the person who was behind the wheel of the car is being held responsible, charged as a juvenile with homicide by motor vehicle. It was a terrible scene. Some emergency workers described it as the worst accident they have seen in a long time. It happened October 18th of 2011 along the Club 40 Road in Hazleton when a car driven by 18-year-old Luis Gonzalez of Kiefer Avenue in the city crashed and burst into flames. Gonzalez's passenger, Paul Denoya, was trapped in the car and died. We're told Gonzalez tried to rescue his friend from the burning car, and when police took him into custody at his home Wednesday afternoon, he was, quote, very cooperative and remorseful about the accident. Gonzalez is being charged as a juvenile because he was only 17 years old when the accident happened. Tonight, he's being held at the Northampton County Juvenile Detention Center. According to the results of the police investigation, Gonzalez lost control of the car while rounding a curve on Club 40 Road. The car hit a tree and burst into flames. Gonzalez faces charges of speeding, but police have not indicated if alcohol played a role in this fatal accident. He is already serving his 28-year term behind bars, but now the man known as the Kids for Cash judge, Mark Chivarella, has appealed his conviction in the juvenile justice scandal. Chivarella asked the Philadelphia-based 3rd U.S. Circuit Court of Appeals to overturn his conviction on racketeering charges. According to reports, the defense says Judge Edwin Kosick should have disqualified himself because of statements he made to the media and the public and that Cossack prevented Chivarella from mounting an effective defense. Chivarella was on trial and convicted of taking $2.8 million from businesses for sending juveniles away to two for-profit juvenile detention agencies, basically locking kids up for his own profit. A local football coach says... He didn't do it. Holy Redeemer varsity football coach Joseph Ostrowski was indicted by a federal grand jury on a child pornography charge, but he says he's not guilty and told that to a judge on Wednesday. The 28-year-old of Wilkesbury was arrested on May 7th by the FBI. Federal agents say Ostrowski was baiting a minor into sexual conduct so that he could produce and distribute child pornography. Prosecutors filed an additional charge of extortion against Ostrowski, claiming he made a threat to injure the reputation of another as part of this case. It was a heated battle as Hazleton City Council members exchanged words over a proposed change in the way public meetings are handled. That's stupid. Well, we're the laughing stock of Pennsylvania if this is passed. This is idiotic. No one has this. That's not what you asked me. Now you're 
It all deals with the amount of information that would be provided at a meeting, and it would also limit questioning. Now, this would not only include the public, but members of council, basically limiting audience participation and questions from council members, along with barring them from access to certain information. But it would allow the mayor and heads of city departments to not be affected at all. Now, the proposed public meeting rule did not get a vote Wednesday night. Council members could even be heard yelling at each other in a meeting room before the start of the regular meeting, and the yelling continued during that meeting. Minority Council Members Jack Mundy and Jean Mope publicly ridiculed President Jim Perry and fellow Majority Council Members Karen Cabell and Keith Bast, along with Mayor Joe Yanuzzi, over the rule that they say would severely restrict both council and the public's ability to access information. According to the standard speaker today, President Perry said he proposed the council rule changes in an effort to hold ourselves to a higher standard. The council president said he's open to amending some of the more controversial provisions of the resolution, saying it was never his intent to, quote, stifle anyone's questions, end quote. While that battle continues, we invite you to read more about it in today's edition of The Standard Speaker. Either grab a copy of it or go online at thestandardspeaker.com. Much more to that story there in the city of Hazleton. And still to come on News 13, sports is on deck with Freddie B. And some medals were handed out last night, but not to any sports stars. Instead, some youngsters who have given it their all to succeed. And later, it's something you may know nothing about, but you should. It's a serious medical condition that seems to be spreading quickly. News 13 stops by the local hospital where we got the ABCs and 123s on what's known as whooping cough. Well, we have had some severe weather warnings come through the area today, and some parts saw some passing showers. I know down near where I live, they're calling for some severe thunderstorms in Northampton County, hoping they will pass right by Greater Hazleton or maybe not even make it to this far north. But for now, let's check out tonight's creative condition by Bradley Drama, who is a kindergarten student at the Arthur Street Elementary School. Bradley's having a blast in the pool, which is what I'm sure we all hope to be doing over this Memorial Day weekend. Mostly cloudy skies for the rest of tonight. We do see a slight chance of showers. 56 will be our low forecast for the evening. Again, some thunder and lightning is a possibility. Cloudy skies for your Friday will end the work week off with a high up to 78 degrees. But as the day goes on, we might start off on a cloudy note, but we're going to end on a sunny note because the sun is going to be sticking around for the weekend. We'll check that out coming up next at 4.30. Just windows and much, much more bringing you the forecast at 636-1133 First Street Freeland. Just windows and more dot com. Remember, they're the pros and windows and doors since 1985. As we take a quick break, we are going to check out your winning midday lottery numbers. Good luck if you played. Your daily number, 664, big four, 6963, Quinto 42572 and Treasure Hunt 3815-1830. Good evening everyone and here's tonight's social news. First tonight, congratulations goes out to our own Gary Perna on his graduation from Luzerne County Community College. This wish comes from your family, friends, the McAdoo Fire Department and everyone here at SSP TV. Tonight's Talk of the Town report, Faith Assembly of God is once again offering the Mega Sports Camp for kids 3 to 12 years old. The camp is free and starts June 25th through June 29th from 6 to 9 p.m. Kids can choose from several activities. Call today to pre-register 570-459-2410 or visit www.faith-ag.com. And finally, the Penrod and Gun Club will be holding a Children's Father's Day Fishing Derby Sunday, June 17th. The event will be held on club grounds just off Tower Road in Black Creek Township. Will be open for all children 5 to 15 years old. To register, please call 570-956-7992. That's tonight's Talk of the Town. 
News 13 would like to send sincere condolences to the family and friends of these recently departed. Stanley E. Shalinsky of Denison Township. Funeral arrangements are pending from the Lehman Family Funeral Service in Whitehaven. And also tonight, in loving memory, goes out to David R. Singley, gone six years today but never forgotten. This wish comes from your family. Tonight's obituaries have been brought to you by the Smilax Floral Shop, located on 15th Street in Hazleton. Free delivery to all local funeral homes, call 570-454-0111. And by Mia's. Don't settle for second best when dining out. Check out Mia's all-new menu for 2012, and remember, there is always plenty of free, gated parking behind the Markle Building. Welcome to Chamber Chat. I'm your host, Janine Masrakevich, and we're here with Leanne Felibel at the Chamber in downtown Hazleton. And we're talking about the HR seminar that happens every year. There's lots of information that helps businesses of any size. Yes, that's right. This is our seventh annual Human Resource Seminar. It's going to be held Thursday, June 7th, mm -hmm. and we always have it on the fourth floor of Luzerne County Community College Hazleton campus, which works out nicely since we have breakout sessions. So. Um, the people that attend have the opportunity to choose from two topics going on at one time. Okay. Um, we have three of those sessions and then it's followed by our keynote speaker who is providing an update on HR legal issues. What are some of those topics that they're going to be discussing if anyone would like to sign up for these? Sure, um, session one we have an update on healthcare reform or recruiting and social networking. Session two they, uh, we provide how to start a safety committee or on-the-job training program and work keys program. And then session three, we have an OSHA update or harassment and social networking in the workplace. So it's a very good variety of topics, you know, geared towards human resource professionals, but also for the small business owner who, you know, doesn't have a whole department dedicated to human resources, but still has employees and needs to know about these topics. Everything can be found on your active website, mm -hmm. or you can call the chamber or just come on downtown, stop in, and Leanne's usually here. Yep. See mm -hmm. one of you guys. Next week we are talking about uh, new memberships with Dan Guidish and you can get more information on becoming a member of the Greater Hazleton Chamber of Commerce. Well, it was a celebration of friendships and memories made over the last 45 years for one anchor in the Hazleton community. News 13 stopping by the Hazleton Senior Citizen Center where many gathered to celebrate the 45th anniversary of a place they enjoy spending their time. Singing, dancing, and enjoying delicious refreshments were all part of this party. Here at the Senior Center, so many memories are made each and every day, and that's what keeps so many coming back. To many seniors, it's truly a meeting place they couldn't imagine living without. I've been a member about two years now. What keeps you coming back? The people, the friendship, the activities. It's, it's just fun. It's just like a family now. So it's a good place to come. Oh, I like these because with everybody here and all the music and everything, the food, you, you have a good time. Oh, I'm having a ball. I'm glad seniors do this kind of thing. It gives them somewhere to go and have a good time in their retirement. And life is so short. I'm 71 years old and I'm having a heck of a good time. And I hope to till the day I die. I love it. I come here as long as I can. <laughs> the Senior Center is a wonderful place because it's socializing for seniors. At home, their grandma or their mom or their aunt, but when they come to the Senior Center, they can be themselves and mingle with their friends and have a great time. Well, I'll be darned, they have better moves than I do. I'm going to have to uh, take some lessons from those seniors down there. After 45 years, the Hazleton Senior Center is still going strong. From all of us here at News 13, congratulations on your success over the years and keep on moving and grooving. This week, it's time to recognize those who are there to help others on a daily basis. It's Emergency Services Week. It's set aside to honor our emergency medical workers, the men and women that work hard to save lives every day. Today at one local ambulance company in Hazleton, APTS, where we stopped by for a luncheon. It was for all of the employees as a way to say thank you for everything they do. The staff members were treated not only to lunch, but everyone received a commemorative t-shirt. APTS raffled off three $50 gift cards to the employees along with 20 other prizes. From News 13, we want to say thank you to all of the emergency medical personnel in our area for doing what they do every day 
not only the paid ones, of course, but the volunteer workers as well. Well, they earned a big celebration in their honor after a lot of hard work and dedication. The Helping Hand Society's Academic Helper Program is unique to the area, and it was time to recognize the many successes of this year's class. These 13 stopping by Lobitz Catering Hall for the celebration, dedicated to the little ones who have been working so hard all throughout the school year. Each child walked away with a special gold medal, and more importantly, the confidence to know they can achieve their goals. Helping Hands Program Director Mary Beth Cook says she's happy with the turnout and wants to congratulate all of the children. And it's a celebration for the children, parents, staff, volunteers for a job well done this year. Uh, the children have worked very hard, so have their parents, and it's a big thank you to them. The Helping Hands Helper Program is a program to help school-aged children better themselves in certain subjects or areas. During the school year, the program is held after school and each child has a tutor. And the Helper Program continues through the summer on Monday, when, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday mornings. Congratulations to all of the students on a job well done. Well, from the Philadelphia area to the coal region, the Reading Railroad has traveled far and wide. And some of the areas have been captured and brought back to life for all to enjoy. News 13 stopping by the Laurel Mall where 240 feet of railroad tracks now being displayed to give people a taste of what the Reading Railroad was all about. This interesting display is filled with lights, sounds and of course running trains. In fact, up to 10 trains can run at one time on this track. It takes nearly four hours to put this massive display up and thousands of dollars has gone into the model. The Reading Railroad display will be up until Sunday at the Laurel Mall, so if you didn't yet enjoy it, you still have some time. More news is headed your way. Stick around. We will be right back. An infectious disease is making a comeback in the state of Pennsylvania. This bacterial infection known as whooping cough causes a person to have a coughing fit, the frightening sound can lead to even more frightening consequences if not caught in its early stages. We'll find out right now if whooping cough is also making a comeback right here in the greater Hazleton area. From the Samsung Production Studios in the heart of Hazleton, Pennsylvania, it's your News 13. Hey again, everyone. Thanks for staying with us tonight. I'm Kristen Bozinski. Initial symptoms are just like the common cold, a slight fever, runny nose, and diarrhea. But whooping cough is much more serious than just a common cold. And so far this year, Pennsylvania is seeing more and more cases. Whooping cough is a bacterial disease. It causes uncontrollable, violent coughing. The coughing can make it hard to breathe, which causes a deep, whooping sound, often heard when the patient tries to take a breath. News 13 spoke with pediatrician Dr. James Caggiano, who says an outbreak of whooping cough has actually come from parents and grandparents that have already been immunized. We adults who were immunized in childhood are now having less and less immunity. Mm -hmm. So the key seems to be to immunizing people who are going to be around small babies who haven't yet been immunized. So for example, um, here at Hazelton Jenner on around the country, moms are being offered whooping cough vaccine before they deliver their baby or at the time they deliver their baby. And we're encouraging dads to go back to their personal position to get whooping cough vaccine as well. Uh, this big increase in that you've heard about lately in, in having to get children um, revaccinated in the school district includes that. The, the State uh, Department of Health began to require um, Whooping cough, uh, a whooping cough booster for children in um, the sixth grade, again, to try to get around this issue of waning immunity in young people. The whooping cough vaccine is given to infants at two, four, and six months old. Then a booster dose is given at 18 months and again in kindergarten. Dr. Caggiano says he is not seeing a lot of cases of whooping cough in the Hazleton area due to the high immunization rates in the area. Again, the symptoms of whooping cough look a lot like a common cold. They just last longer. It's very important to catch it in its early stages before any damage is seriously done. Keeping on the topic of health, patients in the Hazleton area are being taken 
care of very well, and Hazleton General Hospital can prove it. For the fifth year in a row, the hospital has received the Health Grades Patient Safety Excellent Award. This award means that the hospital's patient safety ratings are in the top 5% of U.S. hospitals. News 13 spoke with Community Relations Coordinator Leanne Weidlich, who couldn't be happier. And we're very proud to say that we're at one out of 263 hospitals in the country um, to receive this honor, and we're only one out of three hospitals in the state of Pennsylvania to receive it for the fifth consecutive year. So it's really a tribute to our doctors, our nurses, and all of our staff on the quality of care they give to our patients on a daily basis. To identify the 2012 Health Grades Patient Safety Excellence Award recipients, Health Grades analyzed approximately 40 million hospitalization records from 5,000 hospitals across the nation. Congratulations to Hazleton General Hospital on receiving the amazing award. It is Relay for Life season and the American Cancer Society's biggest event is fast approaching. Hundreds of people come out in support and walk for loved ones loved ones each and every year and this year Relay for Life teams, supporters and all of the Hazleton community have something to be extra excited about. These 13 stopping by City View Park were brand new handmade benches painted in the Relay for Life colors, purple and white of course, were donated by the Keystone Job Corps. It's no coincidence that these benches came just in time for this year's Relay for Life event. And they're more than just a place to take a rest. They will honor a courageous man who was actually the brain behind this project. Well, last year, uh, my brother-in-law, Tom Sotek, who was a cancer survivor, as he was making the turn here on the track, he mentioned to Judy Fallon that it got tiring here and it would be so nice to have a bench or two here for the survivors. And she took the ball and ran with it, went to the Job Corps. And as you can see, we have two beautiful benches here this year. And Tom would have been very proud. Unfortunately, we lost him about five weeks ago. Oh my gosh, I am ex absolutely ecstatic. They are beautiful purple and white benches. That is our signature color for the American Cancer Society Relay for Life, which will be held June 1st and 2nd here. And I am I am just taken back by the generosity and the talent from the kids from the Keystone Job Corps and the directors in, in donating this. Well, we're carpentry. We actually cut the wood and framed it and everything. We wanted to make it beautiful for y'all. It came out pretty nice, though. Just the fact that I'm able to help somebody out here in this world with all the hard things that's going on, it's amazing. A job well done to the students who crafted the benches and all of those involved. Now, they're not only for Relay for Life, but for everyone in the greater Hazleton community to enjoy when they visit the park. Remember, Relay for Life will have its lantern lighting at the park Saturday, May 26th, that's this Saturday, and the 24-hour event will take place June 1st and 2nd, and we, of course, hope to see you all there. Moving on tonight, Nadine Sist took the job of police chief in the borough of Freeland back in July of 2010, making her the first ever female police chief of the borough's police department. But in a surprise move, Sist handed in her resignation Wednesday night, effective immediately. News 13 talked with Borough Council President Bob Quinn Jr. early this morning, who could not say much because he had not had the opportunity to read Sis's letter, but would say that council will address the resignation on June 4th. That's the next meeting. Council will also have to vote to accept that resignation. In the meantime, Quinn says Officer Gerald Palermo will be in charge of the department. Since Sist was hired as chief, she has been an active top cop and told News 13 after her swearing in that she was very much a supporter of community policing and wanted to make sure the people of Freeland knew their police department. While not much is known about the contents of Sist's resignation letter, we have heard reports that she stated she will be pursuing other interests. Sis is also a law enforcement teacher at the Hazleton Area Career Center and has served in other communities as a police officer, such as Beaver Meadows. It was a fiery accident that claimed the life of a Whitehaven teen back in October. And now the victim's friend and the person who was behind the wheel of the car is being held responsible, charged as a juvenile with homicide by motor vehicle. It was a terrible scene. Some emergency workers told News 13 
It was one of the worst accidents they've ever seen. It happened October 18th of 2011 along the Club 40 Road in Hazleton when a car driven by 18 year old Luis Gonzalez of Kiefer Avenue in the city crashed and burst into flames. Gonzalez's passenger Paul DeNoya was trapped in the car and died. We're told Gonzalez tried to rescue his friend from the burning car and when police took Gonzalez into custody at his home Wednesday afternoon, he was quote very cooperative and remorseful about the crash. Gonzalez is being charged as a juvenile because he was only 17 years old when the accident happened. Tonight he's being held at the Northampton County Juvenile Detention Center. According to the results of the police investigation, Gonzalez lost control of the car while rounding a curve on Club 40 Road. The car then hit a tree and caught fire. Gonzalez faces charges of speeding as well, but police have not indicated if alcohol may have played a role in this fatal accident. Coming up next on News 13, three local high school seniors were honored at a dinner last night. More on that coming up. But first, will we have a nice sunny Memorial Day weekend or will the rain damper the holiday? Your four-day outlook is coming up. Well, for the past 15 years, hundreds have run over to Freeland to take part in the famous pub run. And this year will be no different, of course. The North Side Borough will be hopping for the Memorial Day weekend, as it always is, with a car cruise on Saturday, live entertainment all day Sunday, and a fireworks display on Sunday night starting at 9. Now, it's all happening in the public park and in downtown. Then Monday, the parade kicks off at 1, with the pub run to follow at 3 p.m. And it's not too late to sign up for that very fun and unique event. 3 o'clock is our 15th annual pub run, the event most people are waiting for. Um, we have people coming from all around Williamsport, Jersey, to participate in it. Um, you can register at any of the local participating establishments up until Friday. And if you want to register that day, you can register at Jimbo's Freeland Party Beverage on 940 from 12 to 2. Uh, there's different categories. You can be into runners, or you could be and come and do it as the fun walk uh, through Freeland. Enjoy yourself, or just come and visit some of the local establishments here and watch the people run by. There will be nine stops this year in the run and prizes will be handed out after the run is complete. There will be an after party at the other side bar where there will be live entertainment. You must be at least 21 years old to participate and your photo ID is required on the day of the run. If you don't have anything planned for Memorial Day, I'm sure that you can find something to do in Freeland. And I'm thinking the 15th annual Freeland Pub Run is going to be on my list of things to do, possibly. Well, we have had some severe weather warnings come through the area today, and some parts saw some passing showers. I know down near where I live, they're calling for some severe thunderstorms in Northampton County right about now, hoping they'll pass right by Greater Hazleton or not even make it this far north. But for now, let's check out tonight's creative condition by Bradley Drama, who is in the kindergarten at the Arthur Street Elementary School. Bradley's having a blast in the pool, which is what I hope to be doing over the Memorial Day weekend, as I'm sure all of you at home hope as well. Mostly cloudy skies will take us through the rest of tonight with a slight chance of showers and a low down to 56 degrees. Here's your four day outlook starting off with TGIF. We're going to start off cloudy on your Friday, gradually becoming Sunday with a high up to 78. Friday evening, some showers, maybe even a thunderstorm, partly cloudy, low down to 60. Saturday, look for the temp to climb up to 78 with sunny skies. Some clouds move in for your Saturday night with a low down to 64. 80 will be our high on Sunday with some clouds out there and showers and thunderstorms are likely. Mostly cloudy skies Sunday night, low down to 65. And for Memorial Day, if you're having picnics, parties, heading to Freeland, whatever you might be doing on Memorial Day, it's going to be mostly sunny. Make sure you dress cool, wear some sunscreen. 85 will be our high here in Greater Hazleton. Your forecast tonight is brought to you by the Lazy Dog Salon, North Broad Street, West Hazleton. Call 459-0310 to make an appointment for your furry friend. And also Valley High Drive in Route 93 West Hazleton. That's going to be a very popular place over this warm Memorial Day weekend. Ice cream is a refreshing treat in the heat. So stop by Route 93 West Hazleton Valley High Drive in. 
Wednesday night, McAdoo Lions Club honored three local students who have achieved academic greatness. Every year, the Lions Club recognizes a senior from Hazleton, Marion, and MMI who lives in the McAdoo area. This year's recipients are Kayla Garzio from Hazleton Area High, Michael Degatange from MMI, and Shannon Skotek from Marion. I, I'm, I definitely messed up Michael's name, and I am so apologetic, Michael. Each student received a plaque and won $50 from the club. They all each got $50 from the club. The Lions hold this dinner every year. This year, the club had a guest speaker from the high school. Also, Father James Melnick, the club's chaplain, spoke to the students and, of course, wished them the best of luck in the future. From all of us at News 13, we'd like to congratulate the three students and which wish them much success in the future. All right, stay with us on News 13. Freddie B's in with sports. He's got a look at PIAA district playoffs action. But first, our Jasmine Brooks heads to the Hazleton Animal Shelter for this week's Adopt Me. We're back at the Hazleton Animal Shelter for this week's Adopt Me. I'm here with Chris Barkanik, and today our feline, his name is Ralph. Now, Chris, I noticed right away Ralph is very vocal. He's meowing a lot. Yes, uh, he definitely lets his opinions be heard. <laughs> okay, tell me a little bit about Ralph. Ralph is a young, neutered, domestic, short hair male. He's very friendly. He loves people, but he's not great with other cats, which is why I wanted to feature him. Uh, he needs to go to a home where there's no other cats in the house, and uh, he'd be a great, great pet for any human companion. Okay, and now how, uh, how many weeks or months ha has Ralph been here? Ralph's been here, I'm not sure exactly, but at least two or three months he's <laughs> been here. He's very friendly, and he definitely likes people. He always, you know, lets you pet him, and he's no problem at all, and he's very pretty. Yes, that's true. And, of course, like all of our other cats, he's also altered. He's neutered uh, and tested negative for feline leukemia. And so why would Ralph make a good pet? Well, he's very friendly. Uh, he's been here a long time, and because he's not good with other cats, he's <laughs> isolated. So he very much appreciates human contact, and I'm sure he'd be very grateful to have a, a new family, a new home. All right, Ralph. Well, it's nice to meet you there, and I hope you get adopted. <sighs> I'm in love with Schultz. Schultz is a hot dog, my other favorite kind of dog, and he is just adorable. He is actually a, you said, a owner surrender, Chris. So what does that exactly mean? Well, for the most part, we only take in uh, stray animals at our facility. We don't accept owner surrenders. We made an exception for little Schultz here because his owner was incredibly ill and could no longer provide for him. He's only a year old, very friendly, and highly adoptable. So we figured we'd give him a chance here through our facility. He is highly adoptable and all he does is kiss. What do you have to say? Do you have anything to say? No. And so tell me a little bit about his personality. He's very friendly. He loves people. Uh, doesn't seem to have any other problems with dogs. He has no food aggression. <laughs> he is currently neutered and uh, up to date on all his vaccinations. Okay. Of course, he was negative for the SNAP4 test, negative for heartworm and Lyme. There's, you know, there's so much you could say about him, but I think that his, his picture shows it all. Yep. He is just so, so friendly and so cute, and I love his little pointy nose and his short little feet, and they're so cute. So, again, he's a hot dog, and he's, uh, how much would you say he weighs? Oh, uh, we actually got his exact weight. I can't remember it. I think he's about 15 pounds. Okay. And he's fully grown. Yes, he's an adult. <laughs> okay, so this is Schultz. He's a little hot dog, and I absolutely love him. So stop by the animal shelter. It's located at 101 North Poplar Street. There are so many adoptable animals here. They even have kittens right now. Last week's ferret got adopted, which is awesome news. There's a bunny rabbit. So many animals that need a home. So for this week's Adopt Me, I'm Jasmine Brooks reporting from the Hazleton Animal Shelter. <laughs> Jasmine, thanks so much. News 13 wants to take, send you to a day at the salon and spa on us. From your head to your toes, whatever you feel like getting pampered is 
fine with us. It's your choice how you enjoy yourself, but you must be caller three right now to do so. 459-9813 for your chance to win a $20 gift certificate to Famous Salon and Spa in Hazleton, plus a 20% discount off any Aveda product of your choice. Again, we're looking for lucky caller number three. It's for your live at 430 newscast only. That'll do it for us tonight. Thank you for making us a part of your day. You can catch this newscast again with a rebroadcast throughout tonight or simply go to News 13's website, ssptv.com. On behalf of all of us here, we'll see you back here for TGIF. Good night.